Hi guys, happy new year, my first video of 2012 and let's hope it's a productive year for all of us on YouTube. Anyway, um, I'm going to answer one of the concerns that I've received uh, many, many times, especially since I made the video on uh, astrology and career. Everybody wanted to know how to find wealth in astrology. How do you know if somebody has wealth or not? Well, if you are familiar with the concept of astrology, there are houses in astrology, like there are signs. There are 12 signs, then there are 12 houses. Each sign represents a certain house. Uh, if you go in chronological order from Aries all the way to Pisces, Aries represents the first house, Pisces represents the twelfth house, so you pretty much know how, what other sign is controlling what house. So if you go Aries, then Taurus is the second sign, that means it's the second house, Gemini is the third sign, that means the third house. Now, the main factors that people come to believe in astrology of wealth is the second house and the ninth house and the fifth house, okay? And I'll tell you why. Uh, because in astrology, uh, uh, an astrologer, especially in Vedic astrology, people, uh, the astrologer will look at the first, uh, first, fifth, and ninth house. He wants to see if this person has good placement in the uh, in these houses, a good impact in these houses, and uh, it's called uh, Tricon house because it forms a triangle. Okay, that's why first, fifth, and ninth in the astrological chart forms a tri triangle. So. They call these Tricon houses, and they judge these houses, especially the ninth house. Ninth house is house of fortune, and fifth house in astrology is in India. It's known as the Lakshmi house. Lakshmi is the god of wealth. Okay, and mainly in astrology, they say second house is the house of your wealth. How much money you will have? How much money you will, uh, you know, accumulate? Where? People, and including astrologers, misinterpret this concept. Second house is not the house of your actual wealth that you will receive in life. Second house is the house of your fixed assets that you receive through family. Yeah, uh, second house is your values towards wealth and uh, money. Second house represents what kind of a savings account this person has. Because look, there are a lot of people who are millionaires who get the million, they spend it. So second house, their second house must be really badly impacted for them to not being able to save. So second house is really not the wealth, it's the accumulated wealth that you have and you have put it in the savings account. That's what second house is. Okay, ninth house, they say it's ninth house of fortune. Like, you know, people are going to go treasure hunting and they're going to find a fortune. That's the kind of un underlined subconscious um, effect the ninth house has on people that oh it's a house of fortune I'm gonna find something. Ninth, ninth house is not the house of fortune. Ninth house is a fortune of wisdom. Ninth house represents all the wisdom and knowledge you will receive through being under the umbrella of God, the, because that is true wealth in ancient scriptures through ancient wisdom. That being under the umbrella of God, knowing the wisdom of life, is a true wealth versus your paper money or gold. Okay. So that is, again, not the true sign of wealth that you see from there. Fifth house, they say in India it's a Lakshmi house because Lakshmi represents money. That's not it. Fifth house pretty much represents uh, the joy and the wealth that you receive from the children. So when you have kids, kids are a blessings of God. So they are a wealth given to you by God. And then through the fifth house, okay, through the fifth house, you see how much support, financial support, this person will have through his or her kids. That's what the fifth house is. So now I'm going to tell you the most important aspect of finding someone's wealth. How much money they will accumulate on their own. Not by parents, not by inheritance, but actually how much are they willing to make in their life. And that is through the 11th house. 11th house, and this is a very... Um, unappreciated, undermined house in astrology, as I came to learn. I'm sure there are other astrologers who, who, are, who know the true emphasis of the 11th house. 11th house in astrology is your incoming gains. How much gain are you going to have with whatever you do? Whether you sell apples or whether you sell uh, things made of these plastic, you know, or these glass. And remember, 9th house, 9th house pretty much represents your married life as well, wealth through the wife. Uh, this is why 
when you open the house surgically, the ninth house, that becomes the Neumantia chart. Neumantia is a divisional chart in astrology that shows how your married life will be, how your second half of the life will be, pretty much after the age of 35, 36, and what kind of wealth you will receive from your wife from being in a partnership with your wife uh, in, a, in, a, you know, in a legal environment. Uh, so that's what 9th house presents. So 11th house, now if you look at 10th house, 10th house is where you put your efforts in, where you go out and you work, 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 work. But do you know your salary, how much salary you make from your work depends on the 11th house. So it doesn't matter if your 10th house is strong. Sure, you can become an um, IPS officer, you can become a CEO of a company, you can become you know, anything up in the high uh, um, positions. But guess what? What if that company that you're working for as a CEO is making just 100000 a year and they have four employees? That means you as a CEO, even though you're title is CEO, you're only making like $25,000, $30,000 a year. So that's what happens. So your effort is 10000 but what's the result of those efforts comes from the 11th house. So this is why when 11th house, when you look at somebody's chart, you have to look at the 11th house, what sign is placed in there. You have to see what planet is in the 11th house, what planet is aspecting the 11th house, or if any planet is sitting there or aspecting the house, or where is the Lord of the 11th house placed. Okay, so those are the first thing you look at in astrology. Second thing you look at is what nakshatra is that planet sitting in. Whether it's a Lord of that house, or a certain planet sitting in the 11th house, what nakshatra are they sitting in? Okay, that's the second thing you do to judge somebody's uh, wealth prospects. Third, you see the dasha that they're going through. See, in, in astrology, dashas, which I'll also go into in the next couple of videos, dashas are a planetary period, okay? Because in your life, in your lifespan of the moment you're born to the moment you die, certain planet is ruling majority of your life and the aspects that it's bringing. So from age first to like maybe five years of age, you might be ruled by Mars. Then after five all the way through 20, 22, you might be ruled by Rahu. Then from 22 to 35, 34, you might be ruled by Jupiter. Then you might after that be ruled by Saturn, then Mercury, then Ketu, then Venus. So you see, depending upon what planet is currently ruling your life period and where that planet is placed, those are the things you're going to be attracting. So let's say if you're, uh, you're 22 years old, okay, and you are running a planet of third house. And your third house planet is placed in, let's say, third house. Or it's placed in the fourth house. So what is happening in this person's life? Well, if, and, and this time we're not judging the 11th house. I'm just saying. So if you're running through the planetary dasha of the third house or the planet sitting in the third house, you're probably going to get things related to that planet. Whatever that planet is doing in the third house, whether it's dealing with siblings, short distance travel, uh, lower education or media or writing or, uh, you know, uh, dealing with uh, dealing with neighbors, dealing with current environment of your home environment. Okay, so that is what that's bringing. So this is why you have to look at what dasha this person look going through. So if this person has a really horrible chart, but their eleventh house is very well placed, eleventh house planet, and that planet, that planet's dasha, they're going through. That's when this person's going to get all the wealth they need in the life. So this is why there's something called in Nadi astrology coordinates, coordinates of Nadi astrology, where each planet, where in the software of Nadi astrology, it shows which planet is controlling and uh, giving influence of which house. So depending upon that, if you see a lot of house 11 coming up in somebody's horoscope, that person is going to be well off, you know, and... So this is why the method of Nadi astrology, I found it to be very interesting, you know, when I was looking through its uh, software and its uh, how they're calculating uh, certain things. So this is why 11th house is something you want to judge, study, and work on, okay? Because 
real source of profession. See, your source uh, of hard work is something else. So 10,000 representing the work that you're putting in, in anything, okay? But the source of income, and this kind of relates to finding yourself, what career should I go into? The source of income, the 11th house, is the one sig important second factor of looking at what you should be doing in life. You know, if, if the 11th house is ruled by Venus, and you see Venus is sitting, wherever Venus is sitting, if Venus is in the 11th house, or 5th house, or 3rd house, you know you should go into beauty, fashion, media, uh, cinema, theater, art, um, you know, just uh, any kind of these industry, and that's where you're going to find your true wealth. Okay, besides judging all those, uh, the Shamsa chart and D9, D10 chart, that's another way to find yourself what career you should go. So 11th house is very important to look at. Now, you must be saying, I know my chart, my 11th house is bad, my all the other things are bad, so that means I'm screwed. I will not make money. Uh, no. Uh, this is why, this is why, you know, um, I don't think the way that most people do because I've seen evidence of how astrology can be changed, how the impact of astrology can be changed, the impact of planets can be changed, and that's through believing in that one source, God. Because that one true light that that is up there, and I don't mean by any religious figure, any religious text, any you know religious name that you know of. No, I'm talking about that one true God. Okay, um, that is that God is a light. Okay, think of it as a light or a prism, and we're merely a reflection of that prism. You know, when you rotate a prism in light the light of it goes all around the room or wherever there's a surface. That's all we are. We are merely a reflection of that light. Okay? So, just because you're an atheist or agnostic, you know, you just have to know one thing, that it's not about religious figure known as God. It's that one thing that is up there that our minds, our three-dimensional brain, are not able to comprehend. But it's there. You know, and this is why I'm a big believer of Freemasons, Freemasonry. And if you look at the symbol of Freemasonry, there's a G in there, in their symbol. It represents God. Because why do I believe that I am one of those Freemasons? Because Freemasons is not Illuminati. They're not out there to control your world. They're not out there to, uh, you know, um, sabotage their people. Freemasons were quite different from Illuminati. Freemasons are the people who wanted to think outside the box. They didn't want to do what the society was telling them to do. They were more of those out, out of the boundaries, scientific type of thinkers. But they knew that you, there is that one supreme God that we have to believe in. So once you believe in that one supreme power and you lose your ego, you go like a beggar to that light, to that one supreme power. That you know what, I come to you as a beggar. I have no ego, I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose. But please bless me. Because I do feel that you are the true controller of me and everybody else. Then you watch. Those powers, those invisible powers that we still cannot see, maybe we'll never see. They have such a huge bank account that for trillion dollars for them, it's literally a pennies. They can give you a lot. This is why I truly believe that astrology is a map of your life. But you can take a different path. Just because your map shows you all these blocks on your way to destination doesn't mean you have to take that map. Take a different route. The route that I'm telling you. So anyway, this was my little um, analysis on the wealth aspect in astrology. So anyway, guys, um, if you want to know more about this stuff, more about astrology, what is true astrology really is besides your uh, garbage daily, weekly, and yearly horoscope, check out my link below. And hopefully that will enlighten you on uh, the subject of astrology and this mystical science. And definitely subscribe above because I'm going to be start. I'm going to start to do some examples of astrology, like celebrity horoscopes, and uh, I'm going to do them in a very creative way. Okay, so watch out for that. It's not going to be this week or next week, but it's coming. It's coming. I've got a lot of things planned for you guys. All right, thank you.